Welcome to my channel, where we explore the dark and twisted world of horror stories. Whether you're a fan of classic tales or new and innovative horror, you'll find something to enjoy here. So sit back, relax, and let's get scared together. Back in my university days, I needed a place to stay for easy commuting. I found a house with five bedrooms and three restrooms, insanely cheap. So, my friends and I jumped on the chance and rented it without second thoughts. Little did we know, the house held a spine-chilling secret, waiting to be uncovered. My friends and I, a group of five, gathered together to move into the house. As I looked around, something felt off about the house's design. It didn't resemble a typical home, but we brushed it off considering the incredibly low rent. After deciding on the room arrangements, we settled in for the night, unaware of the strange events that lay ahead. As the days passed, a week went by, and everything seemed normal without any troubles. Then, the owner's grandmother paid us a visit to check on us and ask how we were doing. Her question caught us off guard. Is there something wrong? She asked. We assumed she was referring to the water and electricity, so we assured her that everything was working just fine. However, she warned us about her son, who wasn't mentally sound and advised us to be cautious around him. We nodded in response, not fully grasping the ominous implications of her words. As the days passed, a week went by, and everything seemed normal without any troubles. Then, the owner's grandmother paid us a visit to check on us and ask how we were doing. Her question caught us off guard. Is there something wrong? She asked. We assumed she was referring to the water and electricity, so we assured her that everything was working just fine. However, she warned us about her son, who wasn't mentally sound and advised us to be cautious around him. We nodded in response, not fully grasping the ominous implications of her words. That night, four of us were at a university event and returned late, leaving our friend Diana behind, who had decided to stay home. While she was watching a movie, she heard a knock on the door and a friend's voice calling for her to open up. Curious, she went to the door but found no one outside. Thinking it might have been her imagination, she was about to turn back when another call and loud knocking echoed through the door, this time a man's voice. Terrified, Diana switched off the lights, hoping to give the impression that nobody was home. But the terror didn't end there. Footsteps echoed from the back of the house, accompanied by relentless knocking and loud demands to be let in. Panicking, Diana rushed upstairs and took shelter under a table, thinking she might find safety there. However, her respite was short-lived as she soon heard someone climbing a nearby tree followed by more knocking on the glass and incessant pleas to open the door. Diana felt helpless, taking shelter under the table in that room. But then, she heard the sound of my car pulling up outside, bringing her some relief. She rushed down to us with a startled look as we opened the door. We asked her what happened, and Diana recounted all the eerie incidents she had encountered. We tried to reassure her, suggesting it might be her grandmother's son and not something supernatural. However, things took a dark turn after that night. Diana's behavior changed drastically as she secluded herself in her room, rarely leaving except for showering. A week later, when we saw her about to take a shower, we noticed her body was covered in bruises. We asked her what had happened, and Diana's response was bewildering. She claimed not to have encountered anyone and was confused about the strange events. Night after night, 
She suffered from disturbing dreams of incessant knocking on doors and windows, accompanied by the sound of doors creaking open. Sleep eluded her, and she couldn't escape the eerie experiences even in her dreams. One day, in frustration, she unintentionally replied, If you want to come in, come in, but don't do anything to me. Following that night, the encounters escalated. Beyond the usual knocking, the bed shook, blankets were pulled, and she even had horrifying dreams of being assaulted. Feeling concerned and wanting to protect Diana, we decided to give her some time away from the rented house. She seemed to improve during this break. After two weeks, Diana returned to the house, but this time she brought a talisman with her perhaps hoping it would provide some protection from the sinister forces that plagued the house. We could only hope that the talisman would bring her comfort and safety as we tried to understand the dark secrets that lingered within the house. That night, Diana had another chilling dream where an angry man approached her, warning that she couldn't escape him anywhere. However, her grandmother appeared in the dream and protected her, telling the man not to harm her grandchildren. This dream left Diana shaken, and she shared the story with us. Determined to get to the bottom of the house's history, all five of us, confront the owner's grandmother. We insisted that she reveal the truth about the house. Reluctantly, she finally disclosed that she had lived in the house with her husband, who tragically died of disease there. She brushed it off, saying it was a long time ago and shouldn't cause any problems now. However, we couldn't help but feel suspicious about her evasive behavior. Back home, we discussed the information and became convinced that the landlady's grandmother had lied to us. Fueled by frustration and anger, Diana bravely called out to the ghost, challenging it to show itself. Surprisingly, after Diana's confrontation, she stopped encountering the mysteries. But the tables turned, and it was we who found ourselves caught up in the haunting events. Around 2 a.m., strange noises echoed through the house, as if someone continuously paced up and down the stairs. My room was adjacent to the stairs, so the sounds were crystal clear to me like the sound of something being dragged. I opened the door, hoping to catch a glimpse of the culprit, but to my surprise, no one was there, and nothing was being dragged. However, the lights on the first floor were switched on. I asked Jack who resting on the first floor if he heard anything or saw anyone, but he claimed there was nothing. With suspicion gnawing at me, I stayed put in my room, intently listening for any movement. Soon enough, the footsteps returned. I peered through the gap under the door and saw a peculiar sight. A pair of feet stood in front of my room, moving up and down as if carrying something heavy. Strangely, the foot looked abnormal, with something seemingly stuck to it. It continued its eerie procession making me feel uneasy. Deciding to investigate further, I mustered the courage to open the door. Just then, my neighbor Sarah turned on the corridor light, revealing the shocking sight before me. The feet were dry and covered in mud, with long, curled nails. Goosebumps raced all over my body, and before I could react, Sarah let out a terrified cry, followed by a loud crash. After the shocking incident with the mysterious feet, my friends on the second floor went to see what happened, but I remained frozen in extreme shock inside my room. The next morning, we gathered to discuss the night's events, and I asked Sarah to recount what she had witnessed. Sarah said she saw a woman with long hair covering her eyes, her body drenched in blood. When she shouted, the woman staggered before swiftly disappearing. 
As we sat down to ponder the enigma, Diana proposed inviting her friend Max, who had a sixth sense and could see the supernatural, to investigate the rental house. We agreed and called Max, who agreed to come over later that evening. However, when Max arrived at the house, he spotted an old man standing in the driveway, repeatedly warning him to leave and not to mess with him. Max sensed an eerie presence, and he hurriedly drove back home, calling us to inform us of the encounter. The next morning, when Max arrived, he was surprised that this house is no spirit house. When Max entered the house, it became apparent that the design was entirely peculiar, and an aura of otherworldly presence surrounded it. Max realized that the house served as a focal point for spirits and mystical entities, but they seemed to exist in separate dimensions from ours. While this discovery unnerved us, Max also reassured us that these entities were not directly threatening us in our world, except for a warning about a female ghost in search of something. After Max's assessment, we decided to sleep together in the living room to avoid being alone in any room, as we felt certain that something sinister was haunting the house. That very night, at around 4 am, I woke up with a feeling of unease. I noticed my friend shaking and turned to check on them. What I saw filled me with terror, a woman sitting on Jack's chest. Instinctively, I reached out to help Jack, but the woman sternly pointed her finger at me, conveying a message without making a sound. It felt like her words were ringing in my ears. In another corner, Tom lay stiff with wide open eyes, seemingly signaling something, but unable to move. The alarming sound of the clock resonated through the silence. Makes us feel like waking up from a reverie. Strangely, we all got up together and scattered around the house to turn on the lights and the TV, trying to change the eerie atmosphere. Despite being together, we sat in silence, too scared to speak. At 8 a.m., we gathered at the university and discussed the terrifying events of the previous night. Diana and Sarah shared their experiences of witnessing a pair of grandparents squatting and eating the food scraps we left behind. Tom recounted how he saw a woman descending from the second floor, floating over our heads, and sitting at our feet. Jack was sat on the chest by the woman. Convinced that something supernatural was happening, we decided to seek help from a monk at the temple to find a way out of this haunting. Upon arriving at the temple, we narrated everything to the monk. He acknowledged the presence of a mysterious force in the house and suggested we listen to the story of one of his disciples for more information. Intrigued and anxious for answers, we agreed to hear the disciple's account. According to the monk's disciple, the house we were living in once belonged to the owner's grandmother's son, who had a fascination for mysterious things. He designed the house differently from others to challenge conventional beliefs and created a space to collect strange and enigmatic objects. As we listened to the monk's disciple, we learned that Grandma's son had been involved in sinister practices, leading to the formation of the sacred sect dedicated to worshipping evil entities. The disciple revealed a disturbing tale of how the grandmother's son once brought the body of a child from a miscarriage, and tragically, the mother died while giving birth. A female spirit, desperate to find her lost child, emerged from the depths of sorrow. Fearing the wrath of this vengeful spirit, the child's father sought the aid of a monk to perform a funeral ceremony for the departed child. The eerie events and inexplicable happenings that followed caused people in the neighborhood to flee, unable to withstand the haunting mysteries that engulfed the house. As the pieces of the puzzle started coming together, we realized that the house itself held a dark history 
and its unique design may have played a role in attracting supernatural entities. With each revelation, the mystery deepened, and we became increasingly desperate to find a way to escape the grasp of the malevolent forces that haunted us. We knew we had to escape the haunted dwelling without delay. Thank you, awesome audience, for tuning in. Your support and enthusiasm mean the world to us. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on our latest content. Until next time, keep spreading positivity and embracing creativity. Stay amazing and we'll see you soon.